Hey guys, welcome to this tutorial. I'm Colin Smith from Photoshop Cafe and today I'm going to show you how to create the X-Men logo. So today I'm going to show you how to create the X-Men logo inside of Photoshop. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to create the logo itself from nothing and then we're going to give it a kind of metallic look. And then what we're going to do is we're actually going to branch off into two separate tutorials. So for those of you who have Photoshop CS6 or CC, all you need to do is just continue along and then we're going to go and we're going to do some stuff into 3D and then I'm going to show you some cool little finishing techniques. If you have an older version, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a link right there for you to click and then you can branch off into the other video and see how to do the same effect in an earlier version earlier than Photoshop CS6 or CC. So I hope you enjoy it. Let's get started. All right, guys, let's have a look at creating the X-Men logo. So right now I'm just starting with a black uh, document here. It's just square and black. So what we're going to do is we're going to go down to our shape tool and we're going to go down to the custom shape. Then up here, we want to make sure that we're using a shape layer. And then we set our fill to, you know, white's fine or just gray is actually okay. I can work with that quite well. Let's just grab a light gray. And then what we're going to do is go across to the shapes and then we're going to use this donut shape. Now, if you don't see that donut shape, what you need to do is just go up under here, hit the gear icon and then go down and then click all and that'll load all the rest of the icons in. All right. So what we're going to do is just going to create a circle. So I'm just going to hold the shift key and I'm just going to drag this out and we're just going to create a circle in the middle. All right. Awesome. So that looks good. The only thing is this kind of donut thing looks a little bit thick. I want to make it a little uh, thinner line in there. So what we can do is we can actually go in and adjust the paths. So if you go down there, you're going to see the path selection and direct selection. Choose a direct selection and then drag over that first point there. Hit the shift key, move the arrow key up twice. Let's do the same thing at the bottom. Shift arrow key down twice, the left, shift arrow key across. And then the other side, shift arrow key. Okay, so what we've done is we've just basically made this um, a little thinner edge on there. But if you look at it, it's not quite round. See how it looks a little bit weird? And that's uh, just quite simply easy to fix. We're just going to grab our direct selection tool. And if you notice this, notice that these are not quite level now. So all you're going to do is just drag these in a little bit. See that? And we'll do the same on this side here. We're just going to pull these out just a little bit. And that just makes it more round. So now it should look a lot better. So we got this round shape. Excellent. So what we want to do now is we want to create the X that goes over the top of it. So create a new layer here. And then what we're going to do is we're going to use the rectangular shape tool. So here's the rectangle tool. And we're just going to drag this out. But what we want to do is make sure, one, I'm using the um, space bar to move this around. I want to make sure that it's long enough to fit through there. But I want to make sure the width is the same. So using the space bar. We're just going to drag it up so it matches the top and then just pull that down a little bit. Awesome. So that's about the right size. So what we're going to do now is drag this down and put it in the middle. Now let's find the exact middle. Here's how we do it. If we go to the other shape underneath that circle and hit Control T and that's Command T for free transform, turn on the rulers, that's Control R or Command R. And then we're just going to drag these down. See that little point there? These are showing the center point of that shape. We're not trying to find the center of the document. We're trying to find the center of the circle. And that's it right there. So let's go down to the rectangle tool. Now we're just going to hit enter because we don't want to change anything. Grab the rectangle tool, hit control T and notice now you can see the same thing there. So let's nudge this up with the keyboard, move that little cross here. So it's on that line. Then we're going to nudge it across back one eh, about there. So right now we're going to hit enter. So right now we're right in the center. So what we're going to do is we're going to rotate it. So hit control T for free transform. Go outside the corner there, hold the shift key, and this will move it in 15 degree increments. So let's go across this way and hit OK. So what we've got right now is basically the Ghostbusters logo. So we want to continue. So I'm just going to duplicate this. So we just drag it into the new layer icon or hit control J and that'll make another copy. Control T for free transform once again. And this time drag it around so it goes the other way. So we've got our X. So let's get rid of those guides. So let's just choose the uh, view and we're going to cl clear the guides. So the guides are gone. So there we go. We've got our basic X-Man logo. 
So let's um, combine the shapes. So we're just selecting it and then we're just going to hit Control E or Command E. And notice it's still a shape layer. So it's created this shape layer, which are vectors. So if you need that as a vector, you can uh, just use it like that. All right, let's dress it up a little bit and give it a little bit of a, a layer style because right now it's just very flat. Although there it is, you know, we can see it underneath. That's it right there. So let's go down. We're going to grab the FX and we're going to go under. The first thing we're going to do is give this a little bit of a bevel. So we're going to choose bevel and emboss. And let's pull the bevel and emboss over to the side there. So we want to work on a, let's have a look. So what's that inner bevel look like? It's not bad. So we're pulling a depth all the way up. And I want to give this size, let's just play around with that a little bit. Probably about there is looking good. And uh, we can actually change the gloss contour if we want, but I'm not going to do anything just yet of that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go under contour here. And we can actually give it different shapes. Turn on anti-alias so it looks smoother. But then these are the contours. So right now you can see this is just flat, so it looks like an angled bevel. Well, what we want to do is make it look a little bit different. So if you look at the actual X-Man logo, it probably looks a little bit more like this one or this one here. So we can just kind of play around with these. Uh, that one there is actually looking quite good. In fact, that one's a little bit close too to what the actual X-Man logo looks like. And you can play around with the range there. See that? Make it look a little different. Uh, probably take it to about there. So what that's doing is it's not starting it right on the edges. That's looking good. Let's go back under the bevel and boss. Play again with the size. Just probably want to tweak it a little bit. All right, that's looking pretty good. But what we need to do is create this kind of a sheen across it. And uh, there's a couple of ways of doing that. But the easiest way to do it right now is we're going to start with a gradient overlay. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with our gradient overlay. And we want to create a gradient color. So under the gradient, click on that gradient. So we've got one side there is going to be white. And we're going to give this just a touch of color. So just tap on it. And see that blue? Let's go down to about the blue greenish kind of almost that aqua but not quite about there and we're just going to give this a touch just give it a touch of blue right there click ok all right so what we're going to do is we're going to grab the other side so we're going to tap on there and we're going to click color and we're going to move back up to the same kind of blue region but this time we want a darker color not too dark and not too much color. Probably about there. So it's almost a bluey, greeny, gray color. All right, so that's got a, a nice gradient on there. So we're going to click OK to apply it. Now we can change the angle of this gradient. If I see that little angle slider there, we can play around with that. And you can see how we can do that. Let's move that around a little bit. I like it kind of that way. And if you play with the scale, notice how this will affect the way this blends. See that? So if you go like there, it's a very, very solid gradient. By the way, you can also click and drag on there. So let's click up and drag a little bit. And then we're going to scale it down a little bit more. There we go. That's looking more like what I'm, I'm wanting. Now we can try going into satin. If we choose the satin, we can give this a little bit of a kind of a sheeny effect as well. So we can change the contour here to different types of contour. See how that will give it a satiny kind of a look. Play around for that opacity. Let's drop it down quite low. And I'm going to change the color to white. So where it says that, click on white. And instead of multiply, we're going to change it to lighten. And let's just play around a little bit. There we go. So now we've got a little bit more of that kind of a reflective kind of a look on there. So that's not bad. It's looking pretty good so far. We've got a little bit more work to go. So let's just click OK to apply this. OK, so the next thing that we want to do now is we want to do something with our background. Our background is not looking too exciting. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a metallic effect. So we're going to use a gradient tool here. We're going to open this up. And once again, we can set these to the black for both sides. And then in the middle here, I'm going to click here. I'm going to put a little bit of uh, just kind of white in there. But then I'm also going to give it a little touch of color. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to clap tap next to it and next to it. So this one here, I'm going to give it a, just a slight blue kind of a tinge. We want to apply it about there. Now I'll drag that off. So let's take this there. We're going to pull the center point over. There we go. So it's mostly going to be black and it's just going to give us a little bit there. And if I hit the Alt key, I should be able to 
technically. Alt option, click and drag. There we go. We can copy that out. That's what I wanted. And then go across there. So we've got this kind of a gradient that's like that. And then we're just going to click OK. And then with our gradient editor, we can just pull this across. See that? So however we want it, I'm just kind of playing around with this. Maybe go over that way a bit more. There we go. That's kind of cool. Hmm. And now we're just going to blur this. So what we're going to do is we're going to choose filter blur. Going to give it a Gaussian blur. Blur it up a lot, a ton. All right. Awesome. So now what we want to do is make it look a little bit more like a brush metal. So what we're going to do is we're going to add some noise. So we're going to choose filter noise. We're going to add some noise on here. See that? And that gives it that kind of a metallic look. And we're just going to kind of just smudge it a little bit. So we're going to choose filter blur and we're going to give it a motion blur. So let's give it a motion blur here and see how we can get that. We move it at an angle. See how it starts to look a little bit more like a brushed metal. And we can just play around with our settings to get that looking about right. So I kind of like that. So we've got this brushed metal background now and we've got our logo on the top. All right, at this point, we're getting ready to branch off. We're about to go into the 3D tools inside of CS6 and CC, and we're going to finish this project up. For those of you who don't have CS6 or CC, then I'm just going to put this link right here. Click on this and then jump off in another video, and then you can finish this in any version of Photoshop. But do me a favor, make sure to hit that like button right now in this video before you leave. All right, so we've got the basic flat logo right now, but what I want to do is I want to convert this to 3D, give it a little bit more depth. So make sure that we've selected our rectangle layer, then we're going to go up under 3D, then we're going to go down here, and we're going to choose the option here, New 3D Extrusion from Selected Layer. So we're going to click on there, and it's going to offer us to go into the 3D workspace. Let's choose yes, and there we go. We get this extrusion. Now this extrusion is a little bit more than what we really want, so we're going to fix that in a sec. What we're going to do is just click once to make sure we've selected our, um, our shape here and make sure that tool is on by default. And we're just going to change the angle of it just to create something a little bit more of an interesting angle. Now, this extrusion is way too deep. So what we're going to do is in the properties panel, click on that little option there, the second one. And then we can pull down the extrusion. In fact, I want to set that quite small. Let's do it about 50. Actually, not even 50. Let's try 40. 40 is looking good. And let's go back under this shape again. And once again, I just want to play around with that a little bit. It's looking pretty good. Turn off cast shadows because we don't want the cast shadows. And that's looking not too bad. All right. So what we're going to do now is I'm just going to hide this. And we want to just kind of play around so we can grab our little lighting here and we can give it some lighting. So we definitely want that lighting to be coming from the top, from about here. Let's try a little bit more. About there is looking good. And if it's a little too bright, you can go up under the light there. And we see we've got the infinite light. And we can turn it down just a smidge. See that? So let's make it not quite so bright. I've got that round to about, I don't know, 58 right there. Looking good. Now what we want to do is we just want to render this now. So we're going to click on our layer. We're going to grab our marquee tool. We're just going to select a random marquee tool. And now we want to apply a render. So what we're going to do is hold down the Shift, Option, Command. And that will be Shift, Alt, Control on Windows. So basically all the modifiers. And then the R key. And now it's going to start rendering. And you see what's happening there. It's rendering it out now. So it can take a long time for this thing to get fully rendered. So we're not going to wait for the full render. What we're going to do is just wait for it to look good enough, which is about there. Maybe a little bit more. On yours, you might want to go away and do something and let it render and make it look nicer. But I just want to get the point across here. So that's looking pretty good. So I'm just going to hit the Escape key. All right, so I'm just going to right click and I'm just going to go down here where it says Rasterize 3D. And then that's just going to convert that to a regular layer. All right, that's looking great. So the next thing we want to do is add our shadow. So I'm going to take this here and I'm just going to duplicate it. I'm going to hit Control J. And that will duplicate our shape right there. And what we want to do is we want to fill this top one with black. So what we can do is hit the D key to reset the foreground background colors to black. And then we could uh, control click there to create the selection and we can fill it. Or I'll show you this cool little keyboard shortcut. If I want to fill with the foreground color, I hit Alt Delete. 
that would be well option delete or alt backspace on windows if you add the shift key so that shift alt delete or shift option backspace and then we just go boom like that that will fill it with black without having to make the selection so that shift key will preserve the transparency so let's take this black uh, layer we're going to drag it underneath and i'm going to create a manual shadow so i'm just going to click this and drag it down a little bit i'm going to figure if we put it about here is going to look kind of interesting and now we just want to soften the edges so we're going to choose filter blur give it a little bit of a gaussian blur and that's actually not bad about there it's about 6.8 and then we can bring the opacity down just a smidge. There we go. So it's not quite so strong. About 90 is looking good. All right. So we're almost there. So the last thing we're going to do is we're just going to add a little glint of light. So we're just going to create a new layer on the top. And then I'm going to grab a white brush. So I'm setting white for the foreground color. I'm going to grab a brush. Hit the B for brush tool. So there's our brush. And then we want to create a soft edge brush. Not too big. Pretty small, about 15 there is nice. Make sure opacity is all the way up. Pressure sensitivity is turned off because we don't want to be adding any um, transparency to this. All right, so we're going to add our little glint of light here. So what we're going to do is just paint. So we're going to start here. We're just going to put just some dots on there. So we're just creating these little glints. And we're going to put little, just a couple of them across here, just kind of dotting it on. And there's a couple of things we're going to do to this. So we're not quite done yet. So we're just going to add some here just add some glints there maybe a couple here and why not put one right on this edge there It'd be kind of fun so we're just creating these little glints of light uh, just to kind of make it look like it's a little bit more shiny all right so now we've got those what we're going to do is we're going to duplicate that layer so i'm just going to go down there and then we're going to select the bottom glint layer and we're just going to add a blur. So we're going to choose Filter Blur. And we're going to give it a Gaussian Blur. And notice how it just kind of gives it that nice little kind of glow over the top of it. So we're at about 6.8. Let's play around with that. Maybe not there. Yeah, about 7-ish is looking good. Take the top layer. And then what we're going to do is just drop the opacity down just a little bit. Just to kind of blend it in a bit better. We're about 83. So there we go. All right, guys, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. This was a lot of different techniques in here. Even if you never have to make an X-Man logo or you never even have to make a logo, there was so many Photoshop techniques here that you've learned about. You've learned about using the 3D tools. We've learned how to paint on little glints and highlights. We've learned how to create a brushed metal look. We've learned how to work with layer styles. We've learned how to work with paths and custom shapes. So as you can see, there's been a lot of stuff in here. Thanks for hanging in there with me. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, hit the subscribe button because every week I've got a new tutorial coming your way. And also hit that like button. Don't be afraid to share this with your friends and add a comment. And until next time, I'll see you at the cafe.